Here we're showing our new box card. It, we have two different styles. One is a box frame where the centre is sunk down and you have a neat in, inner frame and a neat outer frame. It makes a nice neat um, finished product. And you can decorate the back with anything you like. The size of both of these is locked because of the frame around it. It's locked to 20 millimetres, which means it will go as a light a large letter rather than a package so it's a bit cheaper on the postage and you, it won't exceed that at least. The next one is a concertina side card. This is the, the same idea, a box frame. Two sides have the neat box frame like the previous one and two sides have this concertina which means you can get lots of lovely layers into a design. Both would actually hang on a wall. If you used a sticky hanger you could hang them on a wall and make a little display of them as well. Here are a couple of examples of what you can make with them. This one's just a simple layered snowy hills with some peel off trees over it, a bit of glittery sky as well, glitter paper sky. And then this one uses the layers to great advantage. As you can see they're all in those concertinas and it gives you receding grassy layers into the background. There you go. This is sold as a two-part item. You have the box frame, which is a die-cut sheet, and then we have the concertina sides. So you can buy either just the frame, or you can buy the concertina and the frame too. This one is pre-scored for folding and using. We're going to start with our box frame. This is it punched out and you'll also find that you have two little tabs as well on the sheet. So this is how to make the frame part. It, this is it pressed from the sheet. We've removed the centrepiece that is waste and you'll also find that these are nicked here. I've cut through these to give us a smooth gap and these are going to fold under later. Now the the first thing is every scored item has a dip side and a bump side. So the front is always the bump, the dip side and when you fold you would normally fold with the bump to the inside. So when I refer to the front it's usually got the dip upwards. So on the front we're going to add tape to the four tabs and the top two um, larger tabs really. And then we're going to flip it over and add double sided tape to the two sides of the aperture right close to the edge but not on the flaps. And then around the three sides of the back flap. Once I've added double sided tape I like to give it a firm press. And I have already done this but that's the sort of thing I would do. A firm press all the way around and that gives you good adhesion to the card. So once we've added our tape, the next thing to do is to fold everything. While it's flat, it's easy to fold um, on all the score lines. And th for this we're using bump side up. And although we're unfolding again, it, we'll remember the folds that we put in. So when we're doing it and it's not flat, the folds are easy to make without uh, missing the lines and these two. So that's really everything folded and unfolded again. The next part is um, to add the tabs around the inner part of the frame around here. So for these, we folded these bump down like that and then these two we're folding forwards and you'll note that we've got tape on the tabs and tape on one of the long sides but not the other and the same for the other one so they're exactly the same. We're removing the tape from one tab. On the card we're going to take a bit of the tape off and fold it and that means that we can reach the backing paper in a, um, after we've added this. 
for the boxes to be neat, we want to have really lovely neat corners. So we pay attention to the corner itself when we do this and make sure it's a really good neat fit. And then the same for this corner. Remove the backing. And then match up the corner really nice and neatly and press firmly in place. That keeps the whole thing neat and square if you can if you do it as neat as possible. Then we remove the tape, the backing from the tape, and then press the frame firmly in place. Then we're going to do exactly the same for the other side. Backing off of the tabs. Oops. Peel a bit of the backing back. Make a really lovely neat corner and press firmly. And another neat corner and press firmly. Remove the backing from that piece and press that firmly in place. Now that forms the frame and you'll see it gives you a really lovely neat finish there. Then for the next part, we, we want to do the tabs next. Well we can still get our fingers in to give it a nice press, we'll do that. So it's backing off of the tape. And we're folding it in like that and we're going to give it a nice neat corner and press firmly. And the same for this side. Neat corner, press firmly. And then the other two corners. Tape backing off. And a neat neat corner firm press. It's a bit trickier to get your fingers in there, but it is important to give it a good press. Neat corner and a firm press. Okay, now you'll note that we had, I'll bend that back out of the way, it puts less strain on that corner. You'll note that we have two with tape on the outer fold, outer frame sorry, and two with tape on the inner frame. I start with the outer frame ones, we remove the backing, and then lift up and pop that underneath. You want this tab to go all the way into the fold and then you can press down onto it and it gives a neat, like a box section that doesn't want to rock about. It, doing it underneath instead of on top means that you can't overlap the edge here because that would show from the inside of the frame. So again, we're lifting the inner flap putting the outer flap underneath, right up to the fold, nestled nicely, and then press. Now this can be a bit trickier to press, but we want a firm press, so I'll insert that underneath, and that gives us something to press against. Okay, the next part is the inner frame. So we'll remove the backing from these two. And then we're going to fold this onto there. We want to make sure that this edge doesn't go past that inner flap. If, you, if it actually goes past there it will show. And for this one we're going to raise it up slightly. We can't adhere this to anything because it hasn't got the little flap, it's got the whole flap. So we'll take the backing from that one. There we go. 
and we've raised that so that when it comes in contact with the back flap it will stick to it nicely and then we're going to fold it over we want to match up the corners really neatly and then give it a press and there you have your box card finished it makes a nice neat frame ready to decorate the next part we're going to do is the concertina side um, insert. Again, we have a dip side and a lump side. We want lump side up for this, and then we're going to fold on all of the, the scored lines in a zigzag fashion. You need to place your fingers, fingernails really, on the line and they will fold. bit like that. Try to make sure you get on the lines or it will be out of square and then we want to really enforce those lines by pressing down with a bone folder I do both the inner crease and the outer crease It like that and then we do the same for the other side that gives us a, a really nice firm crease that will hold its shape quite well and we're going to cover the back panel with this is going to be grassy strips across so we're going to have some sky I'll use glue for that Spread the glue a little. It doesn't matter that the top it has got a gap because the frame is going to go around it. And now we need to stick our first concertina fold over the top. I use the larger sticky fixes for this. I place it right at the top because then the frame will cover it, but you need to place it quite close to the concertina too. We don't want it to show once the fold is done. Now sometimes this will ping back up as we work because it's a lot to ask the pads to do to hold down the whole concertina but each layer we put on will help press it down anyway so um, don't worry too much about it, it'll press down as you go. Now I've got my strips of grass these are cut from our graduated mulberry paper and you'll see that I put double sided tape on the ends the double sided tape slightly overlaps the edge and that helps to hold it into the concertina. So we're going to start with the lightest one first. So we need to hold it, we have our strip with the tape on and we're going to hold this into roughly the place that we want it and then this one strip is very very tight across the width so I've got to be careful with that and then we give it a bit of a tug across because we want a really nice taut line across a bit like that and then our second strip so for this one we're going to fold the next one down and decide where we're placing it this one is slightly wider than the first so it should be a little easier to get into place So we'll pop that one on there and then give it a tug so we've got a lovely tight layer across. These are going to help hold the concertina where we want them to be which is why we have to be a bit tight with it. And then strip three. And 
So we're bringing down the next fold on each side and starting with the first side we place it on pretty much where we want it and then the second side a nice tight pull across again no, bit bowed. there we go so you can see it's building up the layers and they layer up really quite nicely and th the last layer so we're going to bring down the next fold on the concertina it's a bit tricksy because it's so close to the end so we're sticking one end and giving a nice oops, got to hold that in place and pull across And there you have your layers in. This is the frame punched from the sheet and we've got these two flaps. These are made to cover over the sides that don't have the concertina. Sometimes you'll use them, sometimes you won't. To remove it, if you fold up the piece inside there and make a crease, you can place your ruler firmly against that and if you press the flap as well, that puts it into a, exactly the position of the crease. And then we need to carefully cut, making sure the ruler doesn't move and that we don't go beyond the aperture. We can remove that piece and give us a nice neat edge. This one we'll use, so we'll leave that there. Right, so here is our frame part of the card We've, and I've um, added the tape to it. This is the dip side, so the front, it's got the dip instead of the bumps. I've put it along the piece inside the aperture and on the four tabs, so that's where we've taped. On the reverse side we've gone the two sides of the aperture. We don't need to do this one because that's where the grass will be, so these are where the concertinas will be. And then all three of the tabs around the side and the four sides of the back panel. And then we're going to fold everywhere. thing we're going to do is re remove half the tape so we can access this like that. We're taking our made up concertina, sky at the top because that's where it's going to have a block and we're going to stick it to the frame. Now we want to get it up close to the fold but not over the fold and the same for this side. We're going to remove the backing and then place this close to the fold, right beside it but not over it and the top and the bottom here need to be not over the fold as well and then we'll press them into place. So now we have our concertina attached to the outer frame and when we press it into place all of the grass should um, stretch across and make neat layers. The next thing we need to do is the corners. So it's the backing off of the corners here. And then we're making up the corners and we need them to be really neat and tidy. So up like that. It's a bit fiddly because the 
concertina bits a little in the way. So we need to press into the corner like that. And then the same for this corner. And press to make a nice firm corner. I find it's easier to fold this panel back at this stage out of the way. And then we can fold for a neat corner. And again for the last corner. There we go. If we fold all these flaps outwards, then we can remove the backing from these tapes. There we go. And then gently press the concertina part into the box and fold the flap back over a bit like that the concertina will ping back up and we want to press it it's not easy to press into place at this stage but we can do it from the front so move that out of the way and give it a press there So there we have it. Remove the backing from this panel. And fold the flap over a bit like that and give it a press. So now we have our um, grass layers across the card. If you've got a couple that are dipped down here, you can add a pad or two to just raise them. And then we're going to remove the tape backing from that one and fold it under. You want to try and keep this level like that. There we go. So there we have our layered grass panels, our layered grass card. I have one piece of grass left over, which we could put on the front of the box like that if we like, or we can stick it just underneath, behind there, whichever way we want to go. I'm going to add a line of double sided along the bottom. Again, take off a part of it, not all of it yet, so we can put it in place. Then we'll tuck it in the top there, and we're going to stick it to the back of this. Here. So it will be fingers in, press it into place, and then we can remove and there you have. So all that's left to do now is to add our little characters. I have these two which are from our colourable set, uh, baby animals, and I, I Add these into the grass, use sticky fixers. You can put some of them behind one layer of grass and in front of the next, something like that. And then add the, his little friend. So we'll go behind this layer for the back feet and his little tail. So really, once you're happy with your position, then sticky fix them in place and you've got a nice little fun card with multiple layers.
This one uses the box card to dangle a nice pretty bauble from. So the concertinas are top to bottom. Then we have a decoupage design on the bottom layer and then the front is covered with a matching scrapbook paper. This little dog uses just one side of the concertina frame. This sweet fun design uses the concertina on both sides and then we floated the words with an acetate banner and the bauble dangles freely from the back of the frame. Here's another decoupage design covered in acetate again and then a pretty border of snowflake, peel off snowflakes around the edge. Here we have the lovely couple snowman decoupage playing the violin. The front of the frame has been covered with a scrapbook paper and then the top layer of the decoupage has been put across the bottom which really lifts it from the design. This design really makes full use of the concertina style. It uses every layer on the side and really adds some depth to the train.